thank everyone for joining today. Um, I have the opportunity to be uh, with Yehui. Uh, we are going to discuss about uh, building such services with chaos technology. There are two, three, four uh, products out there. And we would like to share with you uh, this concept of basically innovation through open source communities. Um, my name is uh, Daniel Izquierdo. I'm one of the founders of the Chaos community, founder as well of the uh, um, Viterdia, uh, software analytics uh, company. Um, I'm part of the Inner Source Commons. I'm the president of the Inner Source Commons Foundation. So if you have any thoughts on Inner Source, happy to discuss about them. Then we have with us Yehui. Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Yehui. I come from China. And um, I'm from Huawei, uh, by the way. And um, I'm the co-founder of the OS Compass which is a SaaS service based on the chaos technology and also the key component provided by Bitagia. Mm -hmm. And also I'm a member of a chaos community. I'm very happy to hear and to share some experience we got in the state years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh-huh, this is my turn. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, we just launched out a survey for uh, our chaos community. Uh, to help us to uh, do some survey. Uh, if you already use some metrics, metrics model or, or tools provided by Chaos community, tell us what barriers you have met and tell us uh, uh, what, what thing we can do to improve all those things. So the deadline is uh, just closed recently to please help us, give us some feedback and uh, we will try our, hard, try our best to make the improvement. Thank you. Um, by the way, if you have any thoughts on software, on data in general, so we have our director of data science from the chaos community, Don Foster. So she's here. Uh, yeah, thank you. By the way, we have QR code here. You can scan at any time you have. Yeah. Because we always put it in the right corner here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So pretty quick, what is chaos? Basically, the first chaos, the acronym is for community health analytics for open source software, right? So the first question we have on the table is what is community health? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many people saw our uh, users who care about the community health. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the individual contributors uh, and the community managers, maintainers, and uh, companies. Mm -hmm. I think except for that, we also have many people from universities, like researchers. Mm -hmm. They care about the, all things happened in the open source because, because it's a key, key part to happen, make people co to make people collaborate with each other. Mm -hmm. So it's very useful for, for those people. And also it's very useful for people who want to invest a startup company, which back provides some backend support for the open source project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed, the, the concept of health is basically something subjective for our minds. If we try to define what health means, it's a metric that's something that, well, we may bring with 10, 15 metrics, right? So this is what we are trying to define in, in chaos. So mm -hmm. far, there are different working groups. Um, we have, for instance, diversity and inclusion. We have a risk working group. We have a working group now uh, focused on OSPOS, open source program offices. Mm -hmm. right? We have a working group that right started on uh, OSPOS at universities, what open source means for universities. And there, are, and there are some others. As well, this is like the place where we are defining metrics, let's say, from a technological agnostic point of view. Uh, but now we have the software, which is part of the conversation that we, have, we are having uh, mm -hmm. nowadays. So the goals of the, of the community, as you can see here, is basically we are, we are defining metrics, we are defining metrics models, we'll see some examples later, um, with the goal of measuring this concept of open source health. Um, we want to produce open source software, which is part of the, uh, let's say, the, the DNA of the community as well. Mm -hmm. um, we want to... Um, uh, bring industrial partners, we want to bring universities, we want to bring individuals, we want to bring open source foundations to help us to define this. So we'll, we'll share with you some references uh, later. Yeah. Okay, I think we just showed the whole milestones we have, what happened in the past uh, blah, 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 six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, um, actually I'm just drawing this community two years ago. So some people from Chaos that old people like co-founders like Daniels, uh, Daniels, Don and Shen, they told me when they, they are, when they are talking about how to set up the community to mirror the health of the open source and they just happened a conversation simply in, in two, uh, 2017 mm -hmm. uh, 
North American uh, Open Source Summit, just like today. Mm -hmm. We have a conversation and uh, okay, go. And we have such community set up. And our first release of Chaos Metrics happened like uh, four years ago, 2000, uh, 2019. And uh, at the very beginning, I think we just have 30 metrics released. But right now we have almost uh, like uh, 100 metrics released and plus 11 metrics model released. And uh, when I joined the uh, uh, community two years ago, we started this translation work, translate from, from English to Chinese and to some other languages. And uh, our first uh, Chinese version was released just uh, you know, mm -hmm. after six months later. And we are very happy to continue on moving, uh, moving forward and continue our career. <coughs> so we call our, ourselves, I mean, the member of uh, community as a chaotic. So mm -hmm. I'm proud of such name. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for the great work. Yeah. Um, moving forward, so again, this, this discussion about metrics, we have software, so we are now starting with uh, software in the discussion. All the metrics, are they implemented in software? <coughs> the answer is no, they are not. All the software is basically covered by the metrics. No, the answer is no. There is certain intersection, so we are working on that. It happens that there is so much data available out there. Um, audio, thank you. Uh, that the, um, basically there is so much data out there that is uh, really hard to, let's say, formalize all of that information, right? So we are moving forward, we are discovering the, the metrics, let's say, that, that makes sense for different mm -hmm. uh, personas, let's say, in the community, and we are slowly covering all of that uh, spectrum of, of metrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's a web website we provide all the metrics we have and all the metrics model we have. You can see that uh, some metrics relate to the event we list all here. And uh, we also have some governance, leadership, and contribution part. So we divide it into the different domains. And also we have some metrics model in the right, right uh, bottom, uh, bottom right corner. We have all the metrics models. So later on, we will show you some examples we use in a real quick case. Um, and now let's move to technology. Uh, for the record, there is another project called Ogor. Uh, Ogor and Grimoire Lab both started, well, Ogor started a bit later, might be right, but both projects started at the same time in, in Chaos Community. Uh, those are doing slightly different things, but Grimoire Lab is the project I know, so this is what we are discussing. And then basically OSS Compass started mm -hmm. and was built on top of Grimoire Lab, which is part of conversation today. So really quick, uh, some key features we can say. So if you think about open source communities, uh, that you that you have are a variety of data sources, and then when you are entering those data sources, GitHub, Jira, Slack, you know, Twitter, some others, basically all the CI/CD, you have an identity in each of them. Mm -hmm. So there is a tool specifically that is taking care of all of the identities and affiliation. So then you can have an an overview of who is who basically in the community. So that's one thing. Then. Um, uh, Grimoire Lab is cover, covers more than 30 different data sources, uh, so it, there is like a, covering like a, I know, 90% of the useful data sources that we can see in open source world, and then there are 70 plus different uh, dashboards, use cases, that are there out of the box. The tool is really flexible, so think of this as a NoSQL database, basically, with a pool of da different databases, information coming from this, and then what is Helping you, Grimoire Lab, is basically to reduce the complexity of first gathering all the data, forget about APIs, logs, etc. Um, you don't have to take care about incremental support. It's giving you uh, all the historical information from the very beginning of that data source, um, and so on and so forth. A bit of the architecture, really quick. Um, so from left to right, basically, is the usual data mining process, right? Left part, we have all the data sources uh, that I already mentioned, uh, you know, Stack Overflow, Docker Hub, some others. There is a piece that is uh, uh, gathering all the information and storing that into a JSON format, JSON schema. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then this is later basically uh, moved into Sorting Hat, which is a tool that is in charge of all of the identities and affiliations. Remember, we're in Europe, GDPR ready. So we need to take care of all of this, opt in, opt out, part of the law. Uh, we need to take care. Um, and then um, the rest of the information is basically uh, two types of indexes or, or databases. Raw information, as this is coming from the original data source, and then rich information, which is then one of the advantages of using Grimoire Lab, which is 
you have information way much closer to the business layer, let's say, of, of software development, right? So this is more or less the thing. And then at the end, of course, you can have reports, visualizations, etc., etc. Yeah. All the technology is running on top of OpenSearch, which is another open source project by Amazon Web Services. It used to be Elasticsearch. They decided to change the, the license, no open source anymore. So okay. Mm. Okay, services born from Grimoire Lab, really quick. Um, we, are good. we are good with time. Um, so, Caldron.io was a service uh, run by, by Viterdia. So, we have Grimoire Lab, which is the open source project. Caldron.io, which is one of the SaaS services. Uh, then we have Viterdia Analytics, which is another tool, uh, in this case, provided by Viterdia, in this case, covered by uh, ISO, uh, standards, uh, quality, security, all of this, you know, to provide uh, such services, but to uh, large corporations with mm -hmm. uh, certain warranties, let's say. There are other dashboards, Mighty Community, Mystic by uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, LFX Insights, by the way, is an interesting uh, aspect here is that this is a proprietary solution by the New York Foundation. Uh, initially built on Grimoire Lab, they decided to evolve the technology, so then they are using other things, but inspired initially in chaos technology, which is good. And then OSS Compass, finally. Yeah. So, Moving forward, if you remember this uh, chart here, uh, then we go into into some of the numbers. A bit a bit more of historical background. All of this started at the university. So, uh, 2000, uh, the research group Librasoft uh, that was studying free software engineering basically um, started let's say operations. 2006, we started the tool in uh, Metrics Gumar. This was the time when I joined the research group, and then in 2012, that was when uh, Victoria was founded. Okay, so then we have like 12 years for research. It was not in the uh, DNA of the group, let's say, to industrialize, to make a product of the existing uh, research. So it, let's say it just happened, right? You, you, there is a certain alignment of all of the planets in the world, and then we say, okay, this may happen at some point. And then we go into 2015, we decided to migrate the technology to a new thing. So then Grimoire Lab was born, and then 2017 we have chaos. And then after 2017 to, to nowadays, we have all of these projects, right, that I mentioned. So our Caldron, FX Insights, Maltic, and some others. Let me represent this in a more chronological order. So please, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, we have, we have this line here. On the left, those are the 12 years. Research and development, mainly doing this. Then we have research in production, which is basically in Victoria. What we were doing was to test the market. Does it make sense? Is someone, you know, putting some money on the table, so then they buy the service? And then uh, chaos started in 2017. And then finally, we have all of these services. So if you think about this, right, we have 16 years of research plus <coughs> testing in production <coughs> somehow. And then because, and this is what I would say, and this is again anecdotal data for today, but we need to look probably at research or so. After um, all of these, uh, let's say 16 years, only in four years, what we have is uh, four services built on top of existing technology. Why is that happening? My point, my thing, is that it's because chaos, basically. Chaos brought so much visibility to the technology that we started to have adopters. So I would say is, first, you can build on top of 16 years of work, something that took a few months, perhaps, a couple of years. We'll see some results from OSS Compass, as, as an example. But then at the same time, you can think of, thanks to open source, you are basically you know, having all of that uh, innovation, and then ideally you are contributing back. Okay? So you are bringing back uh, uh, innovation to the community. So then it's not only that we did all of this research and production, but then we are, you know, having back that uh, innovation from other thought community members, and so on and so forth. So. Yeah. And then we go into OSS Compass. So all yours. Yeah, it's my part. <laughs> So first, I will use this slide to introduce the relationship between the OSS Compass and the Chaos. So first, OSS Compass is open source community. Uh, it provides two main artifacts. First is a SaaS platform, and uh, which is provide for everyone for, to, to use for free. And I will use next few slides to introduce that later. And uh, there is another artifact, we call it OS ecosystem, evaluation system. So uh, this is the theoretical uh, uh, framework. And uh, as you know that chaos, we provide some metrics, which is some atomic indicators. And we also provide some metrics models, which combine the uh, 
a bunch of metrics into one matrix model to describe a user story specifically. And, uh, and also, uh, so uh, our OSS ecosystem, uh, this theoretical pre uh, framework, we just uh, combine those metrics and matrix model into a system. But it's not just a simple uh, list. So I do uh, a research work for this area, I mean the evaluation in open source in the past 30 years uh, from the econom uh, econ uh, economic, uh, I mean the research output, I found that there exists a two mainstream about open source evaluation. The first is initialized from last century. It's more care about the code quality. It's nothing uh, different with uh, our commercial product per se. And also, uh, and the second mainstream is coming from the uh, beginning of this century. And uh, it's uh, more care about the collaboration happened in its own community. It's about uh, responsiveness uh, of users, of contributors. And uh, after 10 years, uh, because more and more commercial companies uh, like Betadria, uh, Huawei, and many other uh, commercial companies start joining open, open source work uh, leading the open source community. So they are more care about ecosystem built around the uh, open source community, no matter upstream or downstream. So the third mainstream, they are more care about the collaboration of happened uh, at the ecosystem. So our theoretical framework to choose using the third mainstream, so we call it ecosystem evaluation system. And we have three dimensions. First, productivity. Second, robustness, niche creation. Okay. And uh, in the next few slides, I, few slides, I will introduce uh, a bunch of the, these things. Yeah. Okay. And uh, currently, in our uh, ecosystem uh, evaluation, uh, system, we have total four uh, four matrix models, and uh, not all so far. But um, we will continue to produce more matrix model. But uh, what we should focus on right now, I mean, the, the first priority, I think it should be the collaboration, because we believe the collaboration is the key part of the open source. So no matter from the internally collaboration and uh, and externally collaborations, we should focus on that first. So we start from the, the first one, collaboration development index. It's more, uh, it's uh, evaluate the um, uh, code development process inside of the community to see how smoothness of collaborations happened in this community. And we use another metric model called community service and support. We use this matrix model to say, okay, um, if you want your contributors from your community to uh, co collaborate uh, smoothly, what kind of service and support you can provide to your contributors? We, we would mirror their uh, capacities provided by this community. And secondly, uh, and the next is uh, organization activity. We use this matrix model to mirror the ecosystem collaborations from the upstream and downstream, we believe, because we believe in one community, and I mean the open source, if treated as a platform, they must have some downstream and, and, and upstream collaborations and stand from the organizations, uh, uh, collaborations. So we will monitoring and uh, evaluate their activities in this community. And also we have some, uh, uh, a, a first one, we call it community activity. It's a, a relatively uh, comp comprehensive mm -hmm. matrix model. We use this matrix model to give, it, to give the uh, overview uh, evaluation for the whole community. So currently we totally have four uh, matrix model. And in our bottom box, we show our uh, algorithm used in this matrix model, because as you know that, uh, all the matrix model, you can treat it, you can treat them as a, 
as a master in program language. Metrics are the, uh, are the input, and the metrics model are the output or return values. So for each of single metrics uh, weight, we use HP to provide, to calculate this weight. And for the output of the metrics model, we choose this uh, uh, algorithm. Actually, this is created by Low Pike, uh, who is a very uh, respectful uh, people. Uh, from our, I remember he just retired several years ago, mm -hmm. but he do a lot of contribution on this part. Mm -hmm. So we decide to use this algorithm to to add our algorithm of the matrix model, and uh, we do some make some improvement. But uh, anyway, we initialize to use this as our default algorithm to calculate the matrix model. But um, I think uh, in the near future we will provide a more flexible algorithm uh, coming from the different people and uh, from maybe from the researchers, mm -hmm. from the students. Well, welcome to these solutions. Anyway, yeah, this is the home page we have uh, of the OSS Compass. On top, uh, we provide URL here. And in the uh, bottom right corner, we provide a uh, scan code to help you to just to locate the URL easily. But anyway, uh, as you can see that this the whole page, we uh, quite simply, we just uh, provide a search box to help you. All you need to do is just uh, type the interesting project located on GitHub or GT, found it, and uh, to check out the inside report based on the full metrics model I just, uh, uh, I just introduced before. And in case you didn't find that, uh, doesn't matter because in the top right corner, in this home page, you can submit your uh, your interest project or communities. So, uh, as so far, we already covered uh, most uh, uh, fifty thousand uh, GitHub projects, and which has uh, across more almost three hundred technical domains already. So, if you have I, I, I may, you may find something you have interest on that. Mm -hmm. So you can touch one single repository URL or you can type an organization URL of GitHub. We, so because we provide a repo level or organization level uh, monitoring uh, on GitHub and GT. So next, I will use three main pages to explain uh, what kind of service we provide for all of you. The first page uh, is about inside dashboard. This is just a detailed uh, model uh, result for each of single uh, repositories or communities. It provides value explorations or risk perceptions. And meanwhile, uh, we also provide some compass life because we think a uh, metrics model couldn't be initialized or, or innovated by one person or by one team. We think uh, there would be more uh, innovation from all over the world. So we provide such space to let you to invent your own uh, metrics model, which could be focused on the specific technical areas or it could be common for all the uh, communities or projects. And um, this is how we get collaborations with the chaos metrics model, because our chaos metrics model, when they set up this new model, we can uh, take a try on in the metrics model lab, uh, compass lab, because in this compass lab, we have, uh, like I, what I mentioned, 50,000 project data site, and we have almost more than 100 metrics, I mean, the independent with each other you can create your own uh, metrics models. And uh, in the near future, we will launch out a new project management data uh, dashboard. Because when you have four metrics model output, you find some problem as a project manager or maintainers, you want to improve that. How do you do so? So we provide detailed metrics on each of single um, uh, project. For example, uh, I found my issue response time is too long. 
So, which are, uh, what is the top 10 uh, issues to cause this problem? We will prove that this data you can, you can manage by yourself. Yeah. Okay. In the last two slides, I will give you a very fresh uh, kiss. Um, do you remember this the keynote shared by Jim uh, yesterday? So uh, it's called the Neutral Homes Beguide Broad Investment. So in this slide, um, PyTouch uh, investment in PyTouch uh, surpass TensorFlow as time of the establishment of PyTouch Foundation, just uh, like uh, last year, September, mm -hmm. just one year ago. And um, <coughs> what is interesting thing is that um, <coughs> in our next uh, ones, uh, in our next slides, we are gonna also provide analysis between these two uh, projects. I swear we do nothing about these slides before, at least before yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's true that um, uh, we, we were discussing, we indeed hide the names of the projects in the next yeah. slides, and then we said, oh, Jim did it, okay, so then, that's <laughs> so then we, we go for that. Yeah, actually we just finished our draft version last weekend, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, as Daniel mentioned, we, we've, uh, at the very beginning, we decided to cover these two projects' name, but uh, constantly, in terms of color, Jim even true the same value we use. That's good. We have no choice. So, <laughs> so here TensorFlow stands for, uh, I mean, the, uh, blue color stands for TensorFlow, and, and, uh, and uh, PyTorch stands for, uh, uh, I mean, red, red color stands for PyTorch. Okay, so first of all, we have to say uh, both TensorFlow and PyTorch played a very important role uh, in open source world, uh, especially in deep learning framework. We are grateful for the, for the grant contribution, no matter in industrial areas, mm -hmm. but also in the economic areas. Um, they are so important for everyone. We, we are appreciate their contributions. So today we just mentioned um, some of our insight uh, based on the metrics model we have in Compass. So first you can see I, uh, I moved the, the date mentioned by Jim here last year, uh, 2022, September. That's the uh, surpass, K, uh, surpass time slot uh, happened uh, about investment. And uh, from this three metric model, first we can go through the, uh, some comprehensive metric model, community activity. You can see that PyTouch uh, exceed or surpass TensorFlow at the beginning of uh, last year. And if we push time again back uh, seven months earlier, uh, we use organization activity to describe the ecosystem collaborations among this community. We found that at this time, uh, at this time slot, PyTorch exceed TensorFlow. And again, we, if we push time uh, another earlier nine months, when we start monitoring uh, collaboration development index, in short, we call it CDI, we found CDI already participated, what has happened, like this. So what we can do if, if you are a community manager in this case. So when I noticed the CDI how such uh, very uh, obvious change, I need to find the root cause, what happened in my community what I can do to make it, to stop it decline. And um, there's one important note to let you know that even for the CDI, I mean the Collaboration Development Index, it is still a proxy indicator. It has some latency compared with what 
is rarely happened. In our recent research, we found the core contribu contributors' migration happened in the community. It's quite important to influence the ecosystem or, or the sustainability of a community. So, in res uh, so I mean, in the near future, we may release this new matrix model in chaos. Also, we will show the result on the mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, I just used the uh, uh, community manager's point of, view, uh, point of view, but what if you are investors? What if you are researchers or users of this software? What kind of value or insights you can get from this? I think it's very open questions. We can discuss later, maybe yeah. after meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is a very powerful chart, I would say, yeah. the, the image and everything. Okay, so now uh, summarizing, because we are running out of time, and we would love to have some questions from, from you. Um, so first of all, Chaos brought uh, the, the, the great visibility to Grimoire Lab as a project, um, started to uh, increase kind of adoption. I assume that if we mm -hmm. go for uh, the charts that, that, that you were showing before, probably we, should, we could see a similar growth when basically joining chaos, mm -hmm. so community index, uh, collaboration index and others. Um, so I would say a community is a really great amplifier of uh, the mission and the vision in this case of Lumar Lab, but or as well as a, a piece of software that is part of this, OSS Compass and others. Mm -hmm. So basically um, it's uh, being part of the community has been uh, incredibly useful from a a community perspective and I would say from a business perspective as well um, and then it's uh, these numbers that we have here right uh, of course well before to the numbers just to say uh, community growth and adopters and everything is a challenge as well so it's, mm -hmm. it's a good challenge to have but uh, it's a challenge in terms of how to make sense of all of the people needs feature requests and, and so on and so forth mm -hmm. um, so it's about you know scaling with the community in somehow by the way data is a good really great tool to scale yourself to understand what's going on in the community so have a look at chaos um, and then it took just as a summary here is it took again 16 years from research to production or test the market and then we've seen that only in four years people have been building on top of this forking the project and creating really great technology out there mm -hmm. on existing things so it's, it's like you can take advantage of all of this history right so this is this is basically open source. And then uh, you, you can share some more thoughts on OSS Compass. Yeah, this is our list here, because it's only take one year to build OSS Compass from scratch to a SaaS platform, and plus the theoretical uh, platform. And uh, during, during we create the whole things, we got a lot of support from Chaos communities, and also we got a lot of support from BTF mm -hmm. engineers. So we never think it's uh, some competitors with each other. We think Chaos and Grim Lab to give us a platform. And uh, OSS Compass is a niche based on the platform. We are very happy to share the values produced by Chaos and Grim Lab, and we produce more values together moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Can see? I think yeah. I think this is all. I think we step into the last part. Yeah. So you have uh, links to everything, all the pieces of software, all that we didn't work on did that match. Yeah. Uh, Q and A time. Do you have questions? Comments? Thank you. Thank you, uh, and also thank you for showing uh, analytics. It's always nice to see mm -hmm. practical examples too. Uh, for organizations doing open source, a lot of times it's interesting to see how much contribution comes from the inside and how much comes from outside contributors yep. to their open source projects. Do you have metrics and analytics for this? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because as you can see, we provide uh, organization activities and uh, in this metrics model, we will show uh, how many organizations have joined your communities. 
how much contributions has they made. So you can distinguish these organizations if it uh, stands for your company or we can stand for some outside collaborations, collaborators from some outside companies. Yeah, we do have such metrics to do so. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's basically part of the information that you can find in all of the repositories. Uh, basically, the developer who's producing that event, a commit, or an issue, yep. something else. And then it's uh, what we call counting potatoes. So it's basically you have, hey, oh, this developer belongs to this company. Yep. So then, after a while, you decide basically where that person belongs to. So then you can start having those, those numbers either from this company or this other company. And then you can compare see trends, um, specifically with Primor Lab and Sorting Hat, which is a tool you can, uh, uh, you can specify the time when that person left the company, so then you are basically accurately <coughs> now, uh, stating the, you know, the activity for each of the uh, organizations. Yeah. All right. Still. Yeah, easy one. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, if a company were to adopt some of the metrics, say, just start with a very basic setup of some metrics, uh, for example, what Susie just mentioned, what, do you have a rough idea of what the time invest would be from scratch to some basic metrics? Um, so that depends on, on if you are willing to use some of the existing SaaS services, which is this, so you can go to SS Compass, you can go to Caldron, you can go to LFX Insights. So there are many places, and then you will have insights on that. Um, if you want to run this internally, so then it's, okay, I want to take the technology, I want to install, I want to do this on-prem, on my site. Um, maybe you can serve how much time does it take, basically, to deploy a remote lab or OSS Compass, because I'm biased here, so. Uh, if you only care about several metrics, you would rather care about, what do you have done? I didn't do anything, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just took my microphone to avoid noise. <laughs> If just the several metrics is quite simple, we just spend like uh, less than one month, it's go. Uh, based on the context that you only care about two or three projects. But if you're considering, I want to have a bunch of like um, a very big community which contains like 10,000 repos, then I don't think uh, a quick support, a quick setup uh, would be happened. So what we recommend that, uh, like Chaos, uh, like Bittitria, they have some analysis uh, service could provide some data directly to you. Yeah. And uh, OSS Compass, we also provide some REST API directly to some metrics or metrics model. You can fetch those data directly and uh, only care about some communities uh, you, you, you care about. In, in, in the usual deployment time, uh, probably in less than a day, it's everything up and running. The only problem is basically about the gathering process. Yep. So if you are I know, gathering information from Maxilla, that's really uh, heavy intense and so on, so that may take longer time. If you are going to uh, git commit to the Linux kernel, you just need to git log, and then you have all the history there. Uh, git clone, sorry, and then you have all the history there. So yeah. Way Linux. much faster. So that depends on the size as well of the number of projects that you are gathering. So it's mainly about that and restrictions on, on the other side. Yeah. More questions? We are, we are out of time, I guess. So it's all. Well, well thank you all. Thank for you. Time.